before we start, I would like to take you through time travel. We'll go back to March 2020, when the biggest pandemic ever known to this generation knocked us down and created a lockdown within four walls and ensured watch only the TV news. How many numbers, how many statistics across the globe, across the country, how many people got infected to this deadliest coronavirus. But one thing which stuck to my mind, common people are getting infected. Okay, that numbers we are seeing. But there is a special category which whom we treat them gods and real life savers, that is doctors. So at the bottom of the news, one small line was scrolling down saying that so many doctors got infected. We lost our heroes, real heroes. That really shook my mind. And if you see the numbers across the state, I'm talking about only the healthcare workers and doctors who are well aware of the danger that they are going to face. Whenever they are attending a patient, they knew that there is a danger. There is a prone, the potential infection. But still, they are putting their life at stake and saving other life. So this is a commendable service which actually makes them the real life savers. It's not just the infection and succumbing to the disease or anything. If you see the mental trauma that they are going through because their duty doesn't restrict to eight hours or 10 hours, it keeps on increasing actually. That those days, if you see, if you see in the news, also many people, they express that their duty hours increased, extended, 12 hours, 14 hours. There was a case, even one doctor had died due to brain hemorrhage because of lack of sleep and stress. So that kind of situation they are facing. And these statistics, again, shown that how many people died. Do we deserve such kind of situation? If you see the picture, doctors are holding the placard. I stay at work for you. Please, you stay at home for us. Save the doctors. So, if these people are getting infected and not able to attend to the services, what will happen to the common man? The doctor is feeling, I can't provide best care for my patients. And patient is expressing, I'm not able to get the best treatment. So it is, this is, we talk about the doctor and patient relation, but when we talk about, in a bigger scenario, the healthcare sector or health ecosystem, what is happening? They are losing their experts. They are losing their skill set. So because of which the ecosystem will completely get disturbed. And ultimately, what is happening to the community and the society? They will lose the hope that we are not going to solve here. And that kind of imbalance is happening in this society. So, before I explain or narrate to my invention journey, this moment I would like to attribute to the doctors because it incidentally tomorrow is the National Doctors' Day in India. So the invasion goes. Being a scientist, when we see such kind of news that some people are in danger, we cannot hold our nerves. We have to do something. So for the purpose, we should have some kind of motivation. We should have a strategy. We cannot go just like that. So the invention process goes to different technical protocols or phases of this. So here, my invention, my thought process gone into some kind of protocols or phases of invention that goes like this. My first point is that I can't say all the common people here, but my strategy is think laterally. If I save one doctor life, this is equivalent to saving 1,000 lives. So I'm addressing that point. Because those days, there is no idea or information about the vaccine development. I'm talking about April 2020. There is no information about the virus mutations. So it is completely unknown enemy that is attacking everywhere. So 
I decided to invent something to protect these real lifesavers. Then I started to research what exactly is happening to them. They are highest intellectuals when it comes to healthcare sector, but they themselves are getting infected. So they are wearing PPEs, they are following very good high level protocols, how to do donning, how to do doffing. Doffing is a process of removing PPE and donning is the wearing process. So, but still how they are getting infected. So my detailed study shows that actually the PPEs which are supposed to be their personal protective equipment that is causing the infection. Because the reason is same. It's a mental trauma, the fatigue, the stress makes them to forget what are they doing because it's completely plastic. The plastic is wrapped around their body and the face, the suffocation that actually deteriorates the mental efficiency. So that's what is happening during the process of doffing, they are getting infected. So here the point is, after attending a patient, there should be a safe zone or a system which can ensure their safety before going for the doffing. So again the point is, these are also human beings. We are not supposed to spray chemical, chemicals on them which are harmful. So my job is that now. I have to design a system which is clean and safe. So now the thing is, I have to establish a system between the COVID ward and the doffing room. So that's where I just ventured into my research. Being an aerospace scientist, having worked in development of fuel injection system for supersonic vehicles. I worked with the lasers, diagnostic systems. Somewhere during that process, I learned about the light wave frequencies or wavelengths. Okay. Somewhere I come across germicidal wavelength, which can kill bacteria, virus. This is nothing new. Actually, you people are using that in your water filters. <coughs> but the wavelengths are different. But we have to see which wavelength we have to use it and what calculations we have to do. We call technically the dosage levels, how much we have to give to kill the virus. So now the thing is, yes, I know there is particular wavelength which can kill the virus, but at the same time, I should understand what is my enemy is. I should know what is coronavirus. So when I gone through that, it is, I came to know it's okay, single standard or any structure which can be killed by using this UVC, where it will make it infertile. That means it cannot reproduce, though if it is fallen on our body, it cannot reproduce after putting the light on that. That light is UVC wavelength. But yes, there are concepts like UV irradiation may have side effects on skin and eyes. But now the thing is, my job is much critical. I have to ensure the safety while safeguarding these people. Here I would like to tell you one small uh, story. There is a long lad called Malesh. So there is a concept state that he, he has uh, one monkey, monkey as an associate. So he told to the monkey that I'm going to sleep now after the hectic day. There are so many mosquitoes. So you have to ensure that no mosquito should disturb me. So the humble and Obedient monkey said, yes, master, I will take care of you. Please go to sleep. So what happened when he was asleep, one mosquito was disturbing the owner. This monkey took a sword and killed the mosquito. The mosquito was on his nose. So you can imagine what happened. It just not only killed the mosquito, even the owner. So here, my job is, when I develop a system which has to be safe process, should be taken care that it should not harm in future. So that is also well taken care. So but before I venture into invention, I'm not the guy who will spend my time and energy 
in reinventing the wheel. So I had to cross-check whether any other inventions are available globally. But to my surprise, there are no inventions or devices available for allowing live human beings under UVC radiation. What are the devices or gadgets that you are seeing are for inoculated purpose are non-living things only. So this boosted my confidence that yes, I'm in right path, that I can develop a system. So now the thing is, I know technology is available. I know that there is no other competition for me to develop. Now the thing is, I should know for corona how much dosage I should give. So if I can go through the literature, I could find a lot of coronaviruses. This novel coronavirus is one among, one among them, and this is what I could find. So I came to know how much energy I should put it so that coronavirus can be killed. So now I should go through the regulations as well because I am allowing human beings, not the non-living things. So I had to go through the detailed study of FDA, OSHA, ACJH, including WHO guidelines, which clearly said that human beings should not be sprayed with harmful chemicals. So we should go for clean technologies like UV-based technologies that also supported me in developing such system. And I could develop the system in just 21 days and tested at a reputed institute in India with the threshold values certified by the different agencies which says within this limit, if UVC radiation is fallen on the human body, still safe. So that kind of values are considered and it's developed. So these are different specifications of the innovation. And even till at this moment, I can say confidently that this is still unique device in this world. So after developing the device, if you see what the doctor has to do. So here, this device can kill the coronavirus in just three seconds, not more than that. When it comes to the safety point, as I mentioned earlier, there is a belief, I mean, that skin and eyes are susceptible to UVC radiation. But the thing is the fact, what are we talking about? UVA, UVB, UVC? So here I am employing UVC with 254 nanometer wavelength, which is a short wavelength, cannot penetrate much deeper. Because if it is a needle, if you take it straight, yes, it will penetrate. But short wavelength will have the peaks and crests. So it cannot penetrate so easily. So that kind of thing. If you see here, in epidemia itself, it is being absorbed, UVC, 254 nanometer. So it is not penetrating to your skin, even naked skin. And when it comes to the eyes, it is uh, 280 nanometers itself is 100% absorbed in cornea. So it is not penetrating to your eyes as well. So these are letter of appreciations where they clearly mention in one of the hospitals because I have donated these devices in hospitals because this is personal societal mission during the pandemic. So they said after detailed study, it saved 200 doctors per day per hospital. And another doctor said, it is a boon for healthcare staff during this pandemic where people are moving blindly without any light ray of hope that something is coming to safeguard as I'm talking about April, May 2020. So, after that, it has gone to different media appreciations because this appreciation is not for me. This appreciation is for the noble cause. That is, being a human, we have to take care of our own species by embracing them. So now the thing is, what is its impact? This kind of innovations, it motivates the doctors, healthcare staff to do their job more effectively because there is one assurance that you are safeguarded. Please go ahead, I am there for you. So that kind of thing. And the, the last point I would like to stress on that, qualitative time with family, even during the pandemic, is what 
my invention could give to the doctor. As I said in the beginning of this talk, a mother and doctor, have you ever thanked you? Here, I will narrate one small story. When I went to one of the hospitals to check my device, how it is performing. So after the inspection, I was just walking in the corridor. I could hear someone is running. But I just kept on walking because this is going, I'm walking through the quarantine ward. So I could hear one voice, excuse me, are you Mr. Vienna? I said, yes. Are you the inventor of this device? Yes, please. Then immediately, that lady, she thanked me with this. And I said, come on, ma'am, what is this? Who are you? Why are you doing this? She told me, I'm a doctor here. Past few months, I'm in quarantine and isolation. I have an infant baby whom I was not able to feed, not able to meet. But with this device, my dean allowing me to meet and feed. This is the wonderful gift that you are given and you are saving us. So, see, this is what, what else I can get? I'm a human being. I treat the doctor as a god and a mother and they thank me. This is more than any other award that I got it. So that's why I thank these real life savers and I'm proudly say that my intellectual, my knowledge are helping these people. So now, in, interesting thing is, scientists are adamant. They will not stop at one place. So G1 served its purpose. Now what's next? So, when I gone through the, again, news, India has contributed 26% TB infections worldwide as per last year records. So, it has become one of the major concerns. So, but the technology, what I developed, can be having impact on preventing TB spreading. So, with that, I could present to health, department and authorities. I had presented them the concept note and they were so happy to take it further. Just waiting for that. So before I sign off, I just percolate my quote. Knowledge is resource and time is an opportunity. The knowledge what I possess now is my resource and the moment what I have now is the opportunity to achieve my goals. Thank you so much once again.